Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome into the next episode of our ultimate guide for Anno 1800. So for today's episode, I want to address something that a lot of people keep asking about, uh, not just on comments on my videos so far, but just across social media in general. That is, how do you go about moving industry off of your main island and get it to another island to create an industrial production hub, as it were? So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be taking all of our industry that includes pig farms, uh, grain farms, potato farms, everything that we can. We're going to take it all and we're going to move everything off of this island and we're going to split it up onto a couple of others. All of our industry is going to be moved up to Dungaree. All of our heavy industry, uh, basically anything artisan and above, essentially. Everything artisan and above is going to be moved right up here to Dungaree. All of our farmer and worker level stuff is going to come down here. The reason for that is because um, this island down here, I've got the grain already on it and it's got the potatoes. I want to produce those two things here. I do have grain and potatoes up here as well, but I've only got six oil springs here. So those six oil springs will let me have two power plants. That's enough to create a nice big industrial area, but it doesn't leave me any for fuel stations. I already have a fuel station down here that only needs one oil well. That leaves me three oil wells for another power plant. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do all of my agricultural stuff down here, as well as uh, bakeries and slaughterhouses and pig farms and breweries and those types of things all down here on this island. That's my plan at the moment. If I decide to change it, you know, I may change it, but that's the plan. Agricultural type stuff for farmers and workers here. Everything else will come up here to Dungaree. Now, before I get started with that, let me talk a little bit about the difference, in my opinion, between efficiency and optimization. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably, and I think that's kind of... Uh, I don't want to say wrong, because, you know, you can use that, I guess, if you want. But I think it is a little misinterpreted in a way, I guess you could say. For me, when I'm talking about efficiency, I'm talking about the best ways of having everything set up for the flow of goods into and out of your factories going to warehouses. To me, that's efficiency. Having a lot of your raw, raw goods, intermediate goods, and final product goods in a row where everything will go from one to another without having to go to a warehouse, that's efficiency. When I'm talking about optimization, I'm talking about using things like trade unions or harbor masters and so on to increase the production of your factories or farms or whatever it is, or change outputs or reduce maintenance, anything, you know, anything that a trade union can do and specialists and items can do, that's optimization. You're optimizing your output from your different factories in different ways, either by, you know, changing the input, say with Chef Michel, who affects the cannery chain. Chef Michel changes the need for goulash to just needing pigs. That's an optimization of the, of the uh, production chain. Efficiency, for me personally, when I'm talking about efficiency, I'm simply talking about layouts and warehouse distribution production chain distribution, things like that. I'm talking about that when I'm talking about efficiency. So whenever people ask what's the most efficient way to go about setting up industry, to me, it's having industry on its own separate island so you can better optimize it with trade unions later on. Now, I keep getting many, many, many comments about, well, why don't you just talk about this trade union specialist that completely negates uh, this production chain? Or, you know, uh, I actually had a good conversation with a viewer about the wood veneer thing from the previous episode where we talked about, um, you know, well, basically his thing was, why did you even talk about, you know, making them in the old world? Uh, because you could have just used Torcador Luca. Torcador Luca is a specialist in the New World that changes out the need for wood veneers with timber for your cigar factories. That's an optimization thing, and I'm really not at the point where I want to talk about optimizations yet. I'm more just talking about efficiency right now. If it's more efficient to make the wood veneers in the old world as opposed to the New World and just ship them back on the same 
trade ship that is bringing the cigars up there for consumption to your investors. Now, it's more optimal to use something like Torquador Luca. But again, I'm not to the optimization phase of these guides yet. So, you know, I know many people are watching these that are more on a more advanced level than beginners. So just hang with me. If you're watching these, just hang with me. I promise I will get to the optimization stuff later on. We will get to it right now. I'm just covering efficiency type stuff. So with that, what I plan on doing is like I said, we're gonna get a couple of power plants set up up here. I'm also going to greatly expand the storage capacity here. I wanna get it up to about 500. We're going to get a couple of power plants set up here. I'm gonna get a power plant set up down here. And then how I'm gonna go about building the new production island is I'm going to take a look at all of the ones that are being used. So there's a lot of stuff right here that's paused. What I'm gonna do is just destroy these that are not being utilized. That way, I don't have any extras just hanging around, basically. Is that all of them that are paused? I think it is. Yeah, that's everything that's paused, okay? So what I'll do is when I get ready to start building it, I'll just go through and look and see how many I have, and I will blueprint that many over here on Dungaree or down on Spittlefurt, wherever I decide to put those industries, depending on what they are. I'll see how many I have, and then I'll set up some blueprints. I won't actually physically build anything yet. I will get everything blueprinted first. Don't spend the resources and strain your workforce just yet. Blueprint it all. Again, that blueprint is right here. Just click it to where this with the exclamation point is highlighted. That means blueprint mode is on, and you won't actually build it. Like, this right here is blueprinted. So it's not actually taking up workforce or materials. Obviously, I'm going to get rid of those because I'm not going to need them. So we'll blueprint everything first. We are going to use commuter piers. I do have one already right here. And I do have one already down here on Spittlefurt. So we're going to also build a commuter pier up here. Let's go ahead and plop him down. Uh, somewhere. This will This will do. And make sure he's connected with a road to your warehouse. And there we go. Now, Dungaree is connected up to the uh, commuter pier network. And he is sharing workforce as a network with these other commuter peers. So that's how the workforce is going to get over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and blueprint out my layouts for Dungaree and for Spittlefurt and start figuring out where everything's going to go and get it ready to be built. It's going to take quite a few building materials, so make sure you have several ships ready to start transporting materials over because it is going to take a lot of building materials, okay? All right, guys, I will see you after the cut. Stay tuned. All right, guys, and here is the blueprinted island for Dungaree. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Of course, we have our... Oil, uh, oil refineries over there. Uh, no fancy layout. I did do a couple of little bypasses so they don't have to go to the refinery. That just gives them some extra options for going right there. But this little basic layout, just going to two, uh, two oil power plants, it's actually working just fine. It does give you the little you know error that the track is occupied, but it is not a problem. The oil still gets there. It still works. So I'm not too concerned about the train track issues. Other than that, everything is just laid out real simple. I didn't do any fancy layouts from the wiki or anything. I just laid out some nice, simple grids for all the production. And tried to keep everything relatively close-ish, kind of. Uh, yeah, we got our clockmakers, our jewelers nearby to the goldsmiths. The canneries and artisanal kitchens are near each other. The bicycle factories are a little far away, but I, you know, I, I decided to put them there. I could put them up here if I wanted to and have them a little closer. Uh, we may, you know, I think the problem, yeah, I don't think I could fit two of them. Yeah, you know what? I'll just do that for right now, just because I can. So there we go. See, little little changes on occasion, and it's okay. So yeah, bicycle factories near the furnaces. Um, sewing machine factories also near our furnaces. We have the glass makers. They are within a decent enough range of our light bulb factories and the champagne cellars. And if we move up here, 
We have spectacle factories. Now they're a long ways off from these guys, but uh, you know I didn't have much room down there for it, so it's not a big deal. They'll just get their stuff from the uh, warehouse over here. Everything else is set up pretty nicely. My electricity does reach up here, so I do have some electrified charcoal kilns. And those are going to help me out a lot. And once we have everything up and running, I will build all five of these different mines here. Both zinc mines and all three iron mines once I have the factories up and running. And all along the shoreline right here, I just have a nice line of sand mines. Now, of course, with the Docklands DLC, when it came out, they added in with the free update the ability to, to put quay roads. But I was not able to get these to go out into the water and still get electricity. If you're going to do some fancy stuff with the sand mines out in the water, I recommend using a Harbor Master. And there is a particular item. This guy right here. Uh, either that one or you could also do... Let's see, where is this thing at? Yeah, this one right here. You could also do this one. It's a little bit cheaper. This is crafted at Old Nate's Harbor in the uh, Sunken Treasures DLC. It's a really, really handy little item that gives electricity to coastal production buildings um and i think honestly i think that's it isn't it yeah it's only three items like that that provide electricity so if you have the sunken Tre treasures dlc make this item right here and you could actually get your sand mines out in the water and get more of them placed out here since i'm not doing that at the moment just going to go with this little setup right here so we've got a few along the shoreline all with power Plenty of storage, 650, and I'm slowly bringing in some other building materials. Take a look down here on Spittlefort, similar situation. We've got a power plant, everything nicely grouped around it. I went ahead and built out the farms that we needed, along with tractor sheds on all of these. Of course, if you don't have Bright Harvest, just build as many as, as you have to have. And pig farms with silos to get everything taken care of over here. So what is the next step? Well, I'm not ready to turn everything on just yet. I need to get trade routes situated first. I've got to get my trade routes set up so everything starts flowing and goods are ready to go. So let's take a look at our trade routes here and see what we've got to do. This guy right here is going to have to come up to Dungaree now. So you're no longer going to go to Flaley. You're going to come to Dungaree. And I'm thinking I'm going to stop with the zinc on this route. And instead, just do double loads of all of this stuff. All right. This guy, this little dude right here, I'm actually going to replace him with a, with a uh, clipper. I'm going to need two cargo slots of that. And then double cargo slots of the coal to come up here. Okay, cool. And last but not least, this guy right here is actually... I'm not going to do that anymore. Instead, he's going to pick up double loads of this and drop it off and pick me up double loads of that. I need to expand the storage down there as well. Let's add another clipper onto that one. So that's going to take the... Or this takes the food from over there eventually if i need more grapes what i'll do is i will just uh trade this off and i'll end up putting a cargo ship on that route from Tarek, and have Tarek also go to spittlefurt to pick up coal and bring the coal up to dungaree but for right now this right here works uh oh i didn't tell you to go there that's where you've got to go cool all right, everybody is going where they have to go there now. So that gets most of the goods taken care of. I think there's one more I've got to... I don't want you doing this mess anymore. I want you coming up here. We're just going to forget the uh, beer at the moment and just do that one. All right, so now you're going to come right there and drop all this off. So much stronger together. Okay. I think, yeah, you're good there. I had him swapped over to that one. We'll send you back there now. 
All right, that should take care of those. All right, last trade routes. Let's get all these right here fixed. Okay, we've got all of those fixed except the cigar one. I'm not actually going to have the cigar uh, the cigar trade route do anything different. I'm going to leave the wood veneers here on Flaley. Uh, wood veneer stuff, it doesn't pollute or anything. So it's perfectly fine to leave there. So I'm just going to leave the wood veneers on Flaley here. Other than that, I think all of that right there is set up. Oh, I do not need that charter route anymore, so I can save a little money there. Cool. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to set up some trade routes to go from these two islands back over to Flaley. Nothing's being produced yet, but I want to go ahead and get them set up. All right, so I have three routes going right now that I have called Capital Goods. What I'm doing with these is I'm transporting on two trade routes, uh, each with a cargo ship. I'm just transporting 50 of each for right now. Just 50. 50 of each of everything on these trade routes. Now, if I go over here and I take a look, I just, I just want to double check what my consumption for some stuff is. What I'm looking for is anything that has a consumption of 10 or more. The reason I'm looking for 10 or more is that means that if the trade route takes longer than five minutes, then one cargo slot of goods may not be enough. So schnapps and work clothes looking like the two that might give me a little trouble. What I would do in that case, since it's just two goods that are going to be like too much right now, I would actually pull those two off of the trade route and give them dedicated trade routes. Stick with one ship carrying multiple goods until that one good you cannot sustain enough out of 50, and then just pull it off and give it its own ship. Whatever ship you want. It could be a clipper, a cargo ship. I don't care. Whatever ship you want to use, go for it. But once you cannot support 50 of that one good in one cargo slot on the trade route, pull it off, make another one. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on these two particular goods once those start coming. All right, guys, the fun part has arrived. This is where you're going to see if anything works right. So what I want to do is we're just going to literally blow it all up. All right, let's see what we've got left here. Anything producing uh, light bulb factories? Yes. Got about these guys right here. Those are producing. So let's get rid of that. All right, we have nothing else producing. Um, let's see, I do need. Oh, that's right. I need some steel because I did leave my did leave the reinforced concrete there so let's just go ahead and throw down a quick steel factory i want to make sure i have this in actual building mode i do like to leave my construction materials on the main island so i am going to leave that here just for now other than that now it's time to get everything turned back on All right, once you have everything upgraded and you think you have it all unlocked, then hit up that statistic screen, choose all of your islands that are part of this chain, and then go through and start looking to see if you've met everything and if there's anything you need to turn off that you have built too much of. Uh, if I take a look right here, I can turn off some work clothes, some bread, some sausages... So let's go down here onto this island. We can turn a couple of things off. We can turn you off. We can turn you off. I can turn you off. So we'll check that again. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. A little bit closer to being perfectly um, set up. I've only got one of these working. That's good. That's fine. Yep, everything looks good to go. So... We have everything turned on, so then you just have to go back through and just start checking all of your inputs. You know, make sure you have everything being processed the way you need. I've got enough pigs, I've got enough grain, I've got enough wool, and I've got more than enough potatoes, apparently. Intermediate products, we're doing good there. On dungaree, everything looks good. I'm actually way overproducing on brass. I could turn some of that brass off. The same with glass. I don't need that much. And with steel... So I could turn some of that right there off and then start balancing out our um, all of our other goods right here. Take a look at everything here. I will need a little more copper coming in. 
and I'm going to need some more coal and iron. So I'm just going to quickly go through and take care of those and get all that right there balanced out. So I have everything set up, I think. If we go and take a look at Tarek over here, I'm not Tarek, I'm sorry, Dungaree, I've got everything met we are short of obviously on this island i am buying all of these different ores from eli and since we are in the investor phase of the game i am bringing in he is supplying rather six tons per minute so that is more than enough to make up the deficits that i have right now i'm also bringing it in from other regions uh, or their islands rather so i have a massive oversupply of all goods and raw materials Agricultural products, we're not doing any of those. I did turn off some of our uh, steel furnaces. And I do need to turn off some of these uh, smelteries, actually. I can, turn off, I can afford to turn off one of those. I don't need that much brass right now. Everything else looks good. And if we, go, of course, take a look at Flaley again, all of this looks lovely. And it's all nicely balanced. And I have plenty of extras that I went ahead and placed for later expansion. So when I need something, all I've got to do is upgrade it and turn it on, basically, and it's good to go. In terms of our trade routes, did a little bit more finicking with that right there. Um, I did take the grape trade route, and I just have grapes on it now by itself. There's only grapes on this trade route. Um, it's not doing much for me. It's just a little bit of grape on there, but I did have to pull it off because I did want to start transporting over a lot more iron and coal, because that's more important to me than the grapes and stuff. So I did split that off, and I created another clipper right here just to make some copper and some furs. I'm still doing furs on my main island and bringing those over here to Dunkery. This is bringing over some copper and some furs for all of that. Now that everything is set up and running, I'm going to turn our soap trade route back on. And I just want to take a look now at those two goods that we were talking about earlier that I was curious about. Take a look at our stock over time. It is going down rather quickly. Yep, and so is schnapps. So what I'm going to do is I will create two new trade routes, probably just with a clipper. Actually, no, I'm just going to do one trade route. Let's just try Let's just do one one trade route and we will set that one trade route up to pick up a hundred tons of work clothes and a hundred tons of snop of snops snaps hundred tons of snaps yeah i'm not sorry for that uh some schnapps and bring that over so i'm gonna divide that up onto a single clipper and we'll see how that goes uh it should be just fine i can go ahead and make a clipper real quick and get that started and that's going to be it I have everything moved off of our island right here. If we take a look, our pollution now is only minus 65, just from those oil refineries and that one single furnace. So that has really boosted our attractiveness up quite a bit, uh, to the point where I probably will have a public mooring down soon to make us a little extra cash. But other than that, guys, that is it. That is how you move all of your industry off of your main island. Now you can do this at any point in the game. I've done it at the investor tier. That way everything is unlocked. I have everything ready to go and I have lots and lots of time, money, and stuff built up. But if you want to move it off earlier, you can. I typically don't recommend doing it until engineers. That way you can have that commuter pier and you don't have to try to build up a population on that other island. I recommend doing it at the engineer phase when you could do the commuter pier. That makes it a whole lot easier. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and it gave you some ideas and some insight on how to move your industry off of your main island and get it moved over to a production island. That way you can centralize all of your production and all of your trade routes into one central storage island and processing island and then send it all back to your residence for consumption. If this video helped you out any, please me leave me a... If this video helped you out in any way, please leave me a like and a comment down below. Let me know. And let me know your thoughts on this method. There's lots of different methods that you can do for stuff like this. Uh, if you have other methods that you like to use, let me know. I'd love to hear those. Uh, and with that, I will see you in the next episode. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.